Sarah Minerva. On today's showcase, we are having a look at the range of charm patterns we stock by Gertie. Now, along with the pattern showcase, because we're going to have a look at each one of her beautiful patterns individually, I've picked out some great fabrics that we have here at Minerva to give you a little bit of inspiration for what would be suitable for some of these really beautiful um, vintage inspired pattern styles as we don't always know what would work with some of these patterns. So I've picked out some great fabrics for you um, to take you on your way of making up some of these gorgeous um, charm patterns that we stock. Now, if you're not familiar with Gertie, she is an amazing lady that has made 50s styling cool once more. She has designed and produced her own range of patterns, and those patterns are really heavily influenced by the 1950s. She has a little bit of 40s, a little bit of, you know, early 60s thrown in, but it's mainly 50s styling I'm going to go with. Um, to describe her range and her styling but the great thing that she's done is that she's got all that really beautiful vintage um, 1950s styling but it's all up to date with modern sizing so we've got some great classic patterns in our modern sizing which is really really important and Gertie is I will say the queen of choose your own adventure sewing patterns because within her pattern collections of each individual pattern you will find that she's got usually multiple sleeves or multiple bodices or a couple of different skirts and it allows you to kind of happily create your perfect pattern out of all these really lovely elements and usually um, within a lot of the patterns as well when you look at all the pattern packs sometimes you can create as little as 20 interpretations of what's within her pattern all the way up to 60 um, so depending upon what pattern pack you have purchased um, you do have quite a lot of scope to create for yourself a really beautiful unique pattern um, with some beautiful vintage um, 1950s styling elements now some of Gertie's patterns can be cross mixed and by that I mean you can take the lovely Liz bodice um, from the Liz dress and mix it with one of the great skirts that you will find in the L'Amour pattern pack um, and that allows you to create a really nice unique design just for you um, within these two patterns and mixing them together because they are designed to actually work together so it does allow you to have quite a lot of options um, within those two pattern pack families and the other thing that Gertie does do is that she runs a monthly subscription um, for her subscribers on a channel called Patreon. And with part of this Patreon package, um, Gertie releases either a standalone pattern or a pattern piece that can be used in with her existing line of patterns that we stock here. So for instance, today I'm wearing the Rita blouse that was one of Gertie's very, very first patterns. And then she did, I think at the beginning of last year, um, she did a long sleeve, so this is the bellowing sleeve expansion from her patron package and sometimes it's very much worthwhile to have a look at what she has as a part of her patron package because there is sometimes the thing that you think oh yeah I need that and that saves me having to do it and it is a worthwhile investment even if it is just dipping in and out here and there um, from her patron package when it suits you to get a few of those lovely pattern pieces that you can mix in with some of the great patterns that we do stock here at Minerva. So if you're just discovering all these wonderful patterns from Gertie and fallen in love with her styling, do check out her Patreon package as she does produce lots of wonderful things as a part of her subscription offer. Um, and it does just keep going with that choose your own adventure theme of sewing that I really do love. Um, I think she does that really well and that's something that I really enjoy. So I do often nip in and out of her patron package to top up all my charm patterns that I get here or from us at Minerva. And the great thing about um, Gertie's styling is where perhaps not 
every single pattern piece can be intermixed. Her patterns do allow you to create a really beautiful capsule wardrobe. Um, so you can get some really fundamental key pieces that look really great together. Um, but do keep in mind that you do have to kind of stick to a colour palette, which I'm not very good at and I end up with um, too many bright clashing prints and not enough planes to get everything to work. Um, but anyway, that's enough about my clashing wardrobe. Let's get on and have a look at some of these great patterns that we have here um, from the Charm line of patterns. So just a reminder, before we get underway, um, everything that I mention, it will have the little product pop-ups as we go um, for you to add them directly into your basket and everything as well will be tagged below if you would prefer to do it at the end. Also, you can save this video to your Minerva account and come back to it later on. Um, you know, if you've got to take the kids to school or you've got to go to work or you've got to do something that's a grown-up task that perhaps does interfere with your sewing time. If you haven't got yourself a Minerva account, now is a really good time to log in with your name and email address address to get one before we get underway so you can save anything that you may discover in the showcase that you really like um, to your favourite list and then you can come back to it later on and also for joining us here at the Minerva community we do send you a really lovely thank you to your inbox. Gertie's patterns come in a size range of size 2 to size 20. Um, so that is a bust measurement of 30.5 inches up to 54 inches um, as your bust measurement as your bust measurement. Um, Gertie is also currently working on extending her range up to a size 34 um, that you may already find some of her patterns in that size on her patron subscription um, but at this stage she's still working through her back catalogue of patterns um, to get up to that size range but it will happen which is a really really um, great thing because it's a massive task to undertake um, to get all your patterns up to that particular size range and it's great to see that she's investing and expanding in her business this way um, to get um, her patterns to reach a much larger wider community of sewists. When you buy a pattern from the Charm line of patterns, um, like every other commercial pattern company out there, all your pattern sizes come within the pattern package. So you will find within um, the Charm pattern line, you will get your nested pattern of sizes from a size 2 to a size 20, and you will get um, all your a to H cup sizes um, variation that your pattern may need. And also what you get in this really lovely little um, cardboard envelope, um, so it's nice and sturdy, nice glossy finish, and what you'll find is that you get this really lovely booklet that is absolutely packed with information for sizing, fit, um, how to make up your charm pattern and all the various bits. So you will find when you do have a little bit of a look through the booklet, generally you've got a few variations on the front and on the back. Gertie tends to show different details um, and particularly this one with the Stanwick skirt. Um, there's my little post-it note that I have on there as well and another post-it note. Um, you always have a page with all your pattern pieces um, clearly labelled so you can see what each one of the pieces are and there is always information on how to lay out your actual um, pattern with any of your pattern pieces if you're unsure how to do your fabric lay and you've got lots of information with your fit so the best size to get for you, you there, there's lots and lots of information within these actual booklets um, and obviously as well how to adjust your pattern should you need to do any adjustments and Gertie will always recommend that you do do a test muslin as well and that is something that I would say as well to make sure that you get a really nice fit um, especially if it's something that maybe you've never done before and also it takes a little bit of the scariness out of the sewing process if you've done a test muslin as well. So these are 
oh this is what the actual little booklet looks like and you have got lots of step-by-step -step pictures to show you how to put together um, your charm pattern of your choice as I go through each one of the charm patterns, I'm going to share with you um, some of our amazing makers um, here at Minerva that have shared their charm pattern makes on our community page for everyone to see. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of inspiration if you're, str if you're struggling um, with what to make from the pattern packs and how to put together so many of the variations that you will find within these pattern packs. And also with everyone that I'm going to showcase, um, their amazing talent, you can go on to their individual profile page and you will discover that quite a few of them have written little write-ups about the pattern, um, spoken about the fabric, may have said um, what tweaks they had made, um, and just shared their general experience of how they found um, that particular charm pattern and whether or not they loved it or hated it or want to make every one of those particular patterns. Um, it's just really a great source of information. It can help you with inspiration, um, maybe a fabric choice. Um, and if you're really just overwhelmed by so much choice in these um, choose your own adventure patterns, that um, it is a really great place to have a bit of a look and to see what other people have made when you are looking at some of these really, really beautiful patterns. So as you can see, we have an absolute um, whole wealth of information on our website um, from all of our seasoned sewists and not so seasoned sewists um, that love to share all their information about their sewing makes um, that they have done with one of our patterns or one of our fabrics. So let's get on and have a look at these choose your own adventure style patterns from Gertie's charm line of patterns. To kick off our Gertie Showcase Extravaganza, all about um, her lovely patterns that we do here, we're going to take a look at the princess coat, and I've got my version um, right behind me here, and also the Stanwick skirt. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do both of these patterns um, at the very beginning of the video, one after the other, because what you will find is that for both of these patterns, you can actually use the same type of fabrics. So for each one of her patterns, I've actually allocated a couple of fabrics but um, you will find that the great thing about a lot of the patterns that Gertie does there is a quite often a repeat of the types of fabrics that she does use so along the video you will notice um, that we have even though I've allocated a certain fabrics to each pattern, um, you could actually use um, any number of the fabrics or any one of the fabrics for any number of the patterns. So let's get started and talk about our, our gorgeous princess coat. Princess coats are really dramatic tailored overcoats that have um, beautiful nipped in waists, Gorgeous full skirt silhouettes, um, usually a really beautiful um, shawl collar and very dramatic sleeves. And you can tell by my version behind me in the gorgeous red that I've done mine in, um, with that lantern sleeve that you do have as a part of the princess um, pattern, it does create a really, really dramatic look, um, which I, I didn't like at first, but I absolutely love it now that I've made it up. And traditionally, princess coats were made in wools, velvets, um, with a striking range of trims and embellishments and custom-made buttons that did make these really incredibly sought-after um, vintage items, or actually even sought after items back in the 50s when the premier fashion label Lily Ann had produced these really gorgeous coats and if you ever come across one of these vintage versions um, in a charity shop if you are someone that tends to love rummaging through charity shops um, do grab yourself it if it's a reasonable price because a very true um, vintage version of a Lillian coat um, does command a very pretty penny and it will be a very good investment if you can snag it at a really good price. However, 
Gertie has created this really beautiful pattern um, in this amazing silhouette and you're able to custom fit this coat without too much of a drama with a few tailoring tips because you get that really lovely silhouette with that wasted detail because it's got a seam waist and that's what gives you um, that really dramatic silhouette and makes it so easy to actually get a beautiful fitting overcoat. And the princess coat pattern gives you both a jacket and a coat option with interchangeable sleeves. So where I've taken the very dramatic lantern sleeve, you do get um, a really gorgeous um, silhouette for a slim, sli a slim sleeve um, and a tailored sleeve. And also you can do the lantern sleeve where you cut it off at here um, and you don't have that lower part. So you get that really nice bell shaped sleeve as well. And within the pattern, you do get two collar versions. So you get one with a notch and one without a notch. Um, and you can make them up with a peplum as well. So you don't have to go with the full skirt extravaganza like I have. Within the princess coat pattern pack, um, you can make up to 24 versions of this gorgeous coat. So you've got quite a lot of scope to play with to get the perfect princess coat for you. Now I've made a few coats in my time and I will say that coats are not as scary as one would think because you just take your time, it's a big project, you work your way through it and you know you end up with something really beautiful and really dramatic that is just right for you. And as this particular pattern does have the waist seam, it does make it incredibly easy to achieve that correct fit. Um, and you also get um, all the pattern sizes from the size 2 to the size 20 and again all the A to H cups so you are able to custom fit and tweak your pattern pieces in between sizes so if you're anything like me um, you know I tend to be one bust size one waist size and another a hip size um, and it does allow you to completely custom make your coat to your size to get a really really gorgeous fit. Making a custom fit coat, yes it is massively time consuming but it's not impossible for anyone wanting to take on this absolutely impressive make. Even though um, through taking on a coat make it is a bit of a mammoth task and can be incredibly daunting. It is incredibly satisfying to know at the end of this incredible project that you are wearing your very own um, tailored made coat and to be honest, once you've cracked it once, you've cracked it forever and you will never ever end up buying a coat off the peg ever again because you will look at them and go, oh, I don't like the sleeve, how the sleeve fits in that. I don't like it, how it doesn't, the waist doesn't sit at the right point. But, you know, once you've cracked it with a coat um, make, you will be hooked and you will do them forever. However, I would always recommend that you do do a calico test first off and as much as you are tempted to knock out um, that calico test in a really cheap charity shop um, sheet find, um, do spend your money on a little bit of really good quality calico that's a decent way to test up your pattern because it will give you a better idea of the actual fit um, of your princess coat and also I will say um, take the time and test up your sleeve. Um, so do a sleeveless version and then do um, your sleeve inserted in your bodice and don't be don't be tempted to only stick in one sleeve I'm going to say this don't do that because when you put it on you will find that your coat doesn't sit symmetrically on you and it will always pull to one side so make sure when you do um, 
test your bodice to pop in both sleeves very very important and then also um, if you're looking at it and you can't quite tell whether or not um, there's any dragging within the bodice um, make up the skirt portion of your princess coat first and then pop that on your test calico and then that way that will give you your whole silhouette and you will be able to see um, if there are any fit issues if you can't quite pick them off the first time round and you don't want to keep testing up your bodice. That's a little bit of a cheat method but I can tell you it does work incredibly well if you do go that option through testing up um, your princess coat before you do cut into your actual fabric. And remember there isn't any need to actually test up the lower portion of your princess coat so that's the skirt portion of the coat because literally you're looking at you know four pattern pieces um, that come together and the top of those pattern pieces obviously um, form your waist circumference so as long as you've got your waist measurement correct you shouldn't have any issues um, with testing any fit um, of the lower portion of your princess coat and that's why it's a really good process to actually feel that you're getting on with your princess coat to maybe stitch up the lower portion of it and then pop that portion onto your test calico to make sure that your bodice looks really amazing before you cut into that part um, of your fabric for your princess coat and also you will find um, that Gertie has given heaps of tips through the production process of how to put together your princess coat and also you will find that I've done a sew along uh, when I popped together um, my version of the princess coat where I've shared all sorts of tailoring tips with you to help you on your way to take all of the dauntingness out of actually making this really really beautiful pattern. As I've made the princess coat I thought I would share with you um, what is actually in in the princess coat pattern pack. So here we have our gorgeous pattern pack in the lovely boxed envelope style and what you what it does come with obviously your pattern in all the sizes um, that the patterns do come in so you've got everything from a 2 to a 20 um, and your A to H cups that you do need um, for the bust part of the princess coat and then along with that you've got your little beautiful booklet and through here you can see Gertie has got lots of versions of what you can do with your princess coat pattern and again on the back where she's showing different details um, in brocades with fur um, all sorts of things she's got going on in these as a little cropped jacket um, the long jacket so there's quite a lot that goes on and that she's giving you inspiration for to make up or how to make up your princess coat and also you've got your lovely little um, illustration at the front here of the vintage versions of the princess coat as well and you've got um, your contents with about lots of the notes, the assembly process, um, a little bit about the princess coat history and the main thing that you've got here is actually all your pattern pieces. So you will find all your pattern pieces are listed really clearly so you can tell what they look like um, from the pattern piece to what piece they are in the book um, and you've also got them all listed down here as well. I do, I have, I should say, colour coded mine. Um, because I just found that a little bit easier so I colour coded it for things for an interfacing only piece, pieces that need interfacing and fabric, lining only pieces and all that sort of thing is why I colour coded mine so it was a little bit of a quicker reference guide to it and if you don't want to um, draw on your lovely pattern booklet what you can do or what you could do is actually do up a little spreadsheet an excel spreadsheet um, with all the pattern pieces on them and just tick them off and just so you know what you've got um, in each one of the bits and you will see that when I've done my sew along for the princess coat that I did um, I have given you lots of tips like that one um, to how to get around to make the princess coat because there is quite a lot in there I think there is something like 26 or 20 
28 pattern pieces um, so there is quite a lot and you will find lots of really useful tips um, that I've given you to breaking down your princess coat and taking out that really overwhelming feeling from taking on such a mammoth make and along with your booklet um, you do have again you've got um, your fabric lay which is really important if you're struggling to work out how to lay out your fabric um, you've got sizing you've got fit issues that you may have um, or patterns that you need to tweak to get them to fit you correctly um, all sorts of things are in this booklet and of course it does have an incredible um, depth guide on how to assemble the princess coat in every one of its variations from go to woe so to speak so you've got so many variations with your princess coat with the peplum and not the peplum and a cropped jacket and your sleeve variation so you've got all that information in here and also don't forget you have my so long tutorial that um, should also get you underway of making a beautiful princess coat what sort of fabric is suitable for your princess coat well that kind of depends upon the version of the princess coat you want to make. So if you were going to make an overcoat version like I've got here, um, you would want to go with one of the vegan wools that we do. And as I said, we've got about 16 different colors that we do um, this particular vegan wool in that I've made mine. And then also you would consider some of the heavy coating types of um, wool blend fabrics or even pure wools in the coating weight fabric. Um, you would consider a wool flannel and also boiled wools they would be your top choice of fabric um, if you wanted something really quite heavy then if you wanted something a little bit dressier you can go for something like a jupion or you could go a brocade and I've seen some amazing versions um, with a brocade and I think a jupion would give you that really elegant um, button down dress feel to your princess coat which would be absolutely fabulous I have to say that might be a challenge for someone out there to do it in a jupion buttons all the way um, three quarters of the way down the front I think would look amazing and very very statementy um, anyway getting a bit sidetracked there um, so yeah so you've got your jupion and also a uh, brocade would look amazing then if you wanted a slightly more casual look you could consider denims um, and also corduroy would give you another slightly um, not as you know give you slightly more of a lesser um a cooler version of the coat because obviously not everywhere is going to live not everyone is going to live somewhere where they need a really heavy coat you just want something stylish functional and to keep you warm without being too too toasty and that's why a denim or a corduroy or even a cotton drill could be a really good choice for you then the other thing you could could consider is actually doing it in some rainwear fabrics and again we have some great rainwear fabrics and I've got one that I will show you in a minute um, that would be a really good choice as well for your princess coat fabric the first fabric I'm going to suggest for your princess coat is this really lovely lady McElroy wool and this is a really great herringbone design um, in a black and white very very understated with a tiny pink stripe and this is an incredibly gorgeous fabric um, it is a wool polyester mix and it is it's really lovely and I think this would make up and look really really gorgeous and really quite a lovely statement version in your princess coat if you didn't want to go with the heavy vegan wool like I've gone for mine and you wanted something perhaps a little bit lighter um, but if you did want to weight it up you could easily do that with so by interfacing the whole overcoat um, which would give it a little bit more body a bit more structure so that would be one option for you so this one here um, is a great fabric for your princess coat is this lovely wool blend um, coating fabric then the next fabric that I'm going to suggest, which we did touch on a little bit earlier, is actually the rainwear fabric. Now, oh, if I can ever get it out. Now, I've never used rainwear fabric myself, 
but I was really surprised by the quality and the feel of this one and I'm really super tempted to make um, a slightly pared down version of my princess coat using this um, because I just do think it looks really really great so it's got that nice cotton feel on the outside um, even though it is a polyester fabric it does feel that nice um, bit of cottony a little bit like I guess um, a cotton drill it's got that sort of pattern to it um, but then on the underside you do have that waterproofing so you're not going to get wet so it is a really lovely option if you want something um, to keep you drier and maybe look super stylish um, out walking the dog all the time or maybe not all the time um, but you've got that really nice statement if you do find that your winters can be quite wet and you need something that's just going to keep you dry um, and look amazing and I think this would be a really great option for your princess coat before I forget, I just want to mention that the Rainwear fabric um, does come in 16 different colour options. So along with the great red one that I have shown you, it comes in some beautiful colours like a royal blue, a bottle green and a really lovely um, silvery grey if you want something that's just a really classic um, raincoat type princess coat and if you wanted something really bold and really vibrant we do have a lovely orange and also a fantastic yellow as well in the rainwear fabric and I think that would make up absolutely beautiful as well um, and definitely it will take your princess coat um, to another level to be seen because it could be so bright especially if it's something that you wear when you're taking out maybe your little mate or maybe even it's a little um her mate um, anyway you kind of get where I'm going with this taking out your little dog of an evening um, when you do need something to be covered up kept dry and looking super stylish at the same time while you're out having that evening stroll and I'm also going to share with you um, some gorgeous um, Minerva makers from our community page who have made and shared their versions of the princess coat. I will be doing that for each one of the patterns that we do take a look within the showcase um, because I think that's a great way to inspire you to not only um, pick up these patterns by seeing other makers within our fantastic Minerva community of makers, um, having seen them make these patterns but also their interpretations on how they have made these patterns with what fabrics and what tweaks they may have done so hopefully that will also inspire you to pick up one of the lovely charm patterns when you take a look at some of our fellow sewists out there who have made these gorgeous patterns First up, I'm going to share with you the lovely Serena Jean, who looks absolutely amazing in her purple hooded version of the princess coat. Um, she's taken the hooded version from the um, patron package that Gertie did, oh, I don't know, way back when. Um, it was probably maybe at the beginning of last year, I guess. Um, but anyway, she looks amazing in her wool coat um, in the purple with that hood on it. And I think the hooded version princess coat would be the perfect coat to do if you were going to take on a rainwear make. I think that would look absolutely fabulous. And then the next makeup that we have for you is completely at the other end of the spectrum and it is Tomcat Stitchery who has made her peplum style princess coat. I think she looks absolutely fabulous in it. I'm sure you will have to agree. And Whitney's princess coat um, looks just at home in her, pepl ver her peplum version teamed with her jeans that are turned up and then equally a amazing with her Stanwick skirt um, that she has also made to give you that lovely suit silhouette um, with the princess coat. So I'm sure you can agree um, that both of our makers are not only super talented, they look absolutely gorgeous in their interpretations on taking on this really beautiful coat make. Now let's take a look at the Stanwick skirt. Within this skirt pattern pack um, you can create up to 
81 different style skirts so that's some serious skirt making for anyone um, so you can make anything from the full-on gourd skirt circular style skirt that's quite a mouthful um, to the really lovely snug pencil version that I'm wearing today that does show off one's curves um, there are unique functional pockets and a number of different variations within her pocket styles um, there are options for a bib, for ruffles, for suspender straps. So there's quite a few versions that I've seen where people have made them um, their circular skirt into a really lovely pinafore style dress. And I think that's a really fun thing that you could do again um, with this actual skirt pattern pack. And it's really great for someone who's perhaps a beginner because you can take on the full skirt um, in felt and it is quite easy to be made up in felt and also you've got all the embellishment that Gertie um, has shown at different points that you can do as well on the Stanwick skirt and also if you are a more seasoned sewist and you want something a little bit more challenging um, the pencil skirt you can fully line and turn it into a really lovely um, quite lovely tailored um, pencil skirt with lots Lots of um, intricate details within that one as well so there is something in this skirt pack for someone who is perhaps very new to sewing or for someone that wants something a little bit more challenging and as I say I have seen so many different versions of this skirt it is a really great one to take on and to challenge you that little bit further as well as I've actually made up the Stanwick skirt, I thought I would just show you quickly again what comes in your pattern pack. So again, once more, we've got the really lovely sturdy envelope design box um, that all your pattern and your pattern booklet will come in. And again, you do have, um, as I say, your booklet with your lovely um, photo illustration photos of all the of some of the versions that you can create on the front and back and showing lots of detail and to give you some really nice pattern inspiration on how to take on this particular pattern um, you've got your lovely black and white image of the full circular skirt and my post-it note there again that features quite a lot in a lot of my patterns um, and again um, more post-it notes and again you've got your um, pattern pieces and also all your um, pattern description for your pattern pieces so when you do look at the actual pattern piece you know exactly what it is um, with that as well and again as you go through the book you've got your fabric lays and also you've got your sizing and any fit adjustments that you could need to do um, to your skirt so again you've got all this information in there and as I said you've also got your tailoring tips in there as well for if you want to take your skirt up to the next level and you want it all lined and looking really beautiful um, with that as well so again you've got a huge amount of information in with each one of the patterns and again you've got as I say you've got your lovely book to help you work through making this particular pattern and I have to be honest the pencil skirt it was a really really easy make a really nice gentle days bit of sewing not so much stress with it um, but a really nice lovely skirt to add to one's wardrobe what are you going to make your Stanwick skirt in? I've got a couple of really great options for you here as well. And don't forget, um, you could definitely do um, this particular skirt in that really lovely um, herringbone tweed that I showed you that I'd picked out for the princess coat. And equally, I've got something really lovely, um, which is this really gorgeous gorgeous um, cream wool it has got a lovely metallic um, thread to it so it's got that really nice flickery silver to it and it is a really really lovely um, lightweight cream and I think this would look absolutely gorgeous made up as the pencil skirt with a really lovely cropped version of the jacket so I think this would look absolutely amazing and give you a really beautiful um, crisp 
cream suit perhaps if you were a bride that um, was getting married for the second time and you wanted something um, lovely and classical but not overly um, wedding-y I guess so this would make up really really beautifully um, in a lovely white skirt and perhaps the cropped version of the princess coat um, as a jacket to be worn with it or you might like it in a peplum version I think this would look really beautiful and very very stunning um, and again you could equally use this as a fabric for your princess coat but um, I'm always a little bit scared of doing a white overcoat because I think it would get a little bit too dirty too quickly um, but if you were going somewhere special again like a wedding um, this is a really beautiful fabric that would make up absolutely super stunning um, in either the princess coat and absolutely perfect um, for the Stanwick skirt I don't know how it would um, work as well in the um, circular skirt because it is a slightly more opened weave fabric um, it might drop a little bit but if it drops a little bit just let it hang and even it off and you shouldn't have any issues with it so I think this would look absolutely great then the other fabric that I've got for you is the lovely Canyon Denim by um, Robert Kaufman and oh, as I get all caught up and this is the fabric that I've actually used to make my pencil skirt in so this is a really lovely fabric it's an incredibly lovely lightweight fabric so if you wanted this for a lovely lightweight skirt um, in the pencil version absolutely perfect if you thought that maybe there was too much fabric in the circular gourd skirt option because this is quite light it won't be heavy and it won't pull so this would give you a really lovely um, circular skirt and of course it would be absolutely perfect for maybe um, slightly warmer climates where you want that style but you've got all that fabric and you don't want it heavy in a felt or a wool this would be absolutely perfect and again you could make up your princess coat in this as well so you could do it in a lovely in this particular lovely twill so you could do it your whole coat um, like I have got my one here so it's the full version princess coat or you might equally like to do it um, and I have a vision of um, my pencil skirt that I have made uh, with this as the cropped jacket with the bell sleeve and I think that would just be a really lovely um, very nice suit to be worn out or to be worn as separates so I wouldn't necessarily wear it all together um, but I do think it would make up into an amazing outfit where I would have that lovely pale jacket that I could wear with my particular beautiful top here in the Rita and it would all work really really well and it would be an incredibly striking outfit and again both of these fabrics perfect choice for the Stanwick skirt or even your princess coat. Don't forget you can make up to 81 versions of this skirt pattern and also by experimenting with different fabrics you will achieve a completely different look with your Stanwick skirt. So this pattern is the absolute perfect staple to be added into your pattern collection. The average quantity that you will need to make your Stanwick skirt, so if we're looking at the pencil version first, you're looking at 2 metres in length required for that one, and then when you're looking at that gourd circle skirt option, if your fabric is at that 45 inches wide length, um, so that I think is the 112-ish, 115 centimetre width, you are looking at 3.5 metres, and then if your fabric is at that 60 inch mark so that is the 150 centimeter width fabric it comes down a little bit to 2.6 meters so you know you do find by making up the gourd skirt in a wool um, you do tend to use a little bit less because that fabric is that little bit wider
Now, who do I have to inspire you to take on this very classic skirt pattern? We have two very talented um, makers from our Minerva community. And first up, we have the lovely Molly Does It with her gourd skirt version. She has added a bib to give it a slightly more relaxed feel and that lovely pinafore style. And she's used a really gorgeous um, classic black wool felt felt for her skirt and I just think that looks really fun, really lovely and kind of just the perfect winter day out and around outfit that is functional, casual and really easy to wear. And our second um, Minerva Sewist that I'm going to share with you is the Whole lot of Sewing. And this very gorgeous and talented lady has knocked up both versions of the Stanwick skirt. So she has done a really lovely gourd skirt version and she has also done the pencil version. So you might want to check out her profile page for her gourd skirt version, but the one that I'm going to share with you is her beautiful um, pencil skirt version and her channeling her inner um, fleur from Bo Baxton's Academy from Harry Potter because um, that is what this particular image absolutely reminds me of and and um, I was about to say Fleur there and <laughs> a whole lot of sewing has made this gorgeous Harry Potter inspired outfit though I will say she didn't start out to make a Harry Potter inspired outfit it's kind of just how it ended up um, she's made the, her Stanwick skirt with the um, Stanwick skirt bodice expansion from the patron package and she has also taken the cape from the patron package to complete her absolutely gorgeous amazing look um, of Fleur from Bo Baxton's Academy um, from the Harry Potter films and I think if she had done it in a pale blue instead of the really gorgeous um, houndstooth that she had made it in um, she, she would have knocked that one straight out of the park but yeah I'm sure you can agree both of these ladies have made some very gorgeous um, Stanwick skirts and they're definitely inspiration for you to take on this really lovely classic pattern. Now that you've decided that you're actually going to make the Stanwick skirt, I guess the next question is, what top are you going to make to go with your Stanwick skirt? And if you're not going to go with a Rita like I have, the obvious choice is the Hepburn top. And Gertie has designed this particular top um, as a knitwear pattern to really fill, fulfill the basic need for a top in every woman's wardrobe and she's taken her styling inspiration from Audrey Hepburn wearing that iconic black top and capri pants in the movie Sabrina. With the Hepburn top you have five sleeve options also five sleeve or five neckline variations and also you've got a number of collar options to add in with it and you can create up to 21 different versions of the Hepburn top so you should have um, just about something for every occasion that you can imagine um, that you would need a top for with this actual pattern. And the Hepburn top, it was designed to be made um, with stable knits, which makes this a really easy sew as it only has the two bust starts um, down the side here and being a stable knit, it really will flatter your curves. So a stable knit is obviously a stretch fabric and you need to have a look at one with roughly between 10, at 10 to 25% um, stretch within the fabric. So perfect options are obviously um, an interlock and a double knit. And these particular fabrics, they do come in a number of different blends. So you could be looking at wool blends, you could be looking at cotton knits, you could be looking at a cashmere, um, also you could get a rail on poly with a bit of lycra there are all sorts of variations of what is available in an actual interlock and the two fabrics that I've picked out for you that will be absolutely perfect for your Hepburn top are two really lovely ones that we have from Art Gallery and they are both a 95% Prima cotton and a 5 
5% spandex and they have just the perfect amount of stretch to make up um, your Hepburn top in and I have picked out for you obviously two very bright patterns um, because let's face it you can go onto the website you can find something in a black or a navy or a white if you want a plain colour but I want to give you um, a little bit more loud option to discover I guess and that's why I tend to always pick out some of the really bright patterns because you can discover um, lots of the planes quite easily and I always think a pattern is really good and the showcase is a really great place to share with you some of our amazing pattern fabrics that we have. So we've got this one here which is an absolute gorgeous um, tealy green I guess. Um, I wouldn't say it's quite turquoise, it's more teal, it's got a little bit more um, green to it than the blue I guess um, but you've got those lovely roses on it in the pinks and the magentas and a little bit of peach which is really quite popular um, this season within a lot of the art gallery fabrics so you've got this one here which is absolutely beautiful and I think this would make up really lovely into a really gorgeous short sleeve version or the sleeveless version um, of your Hepburn top because it will give you a splash of colour perfect for the beach side and holiday um, you know just to wear again with your capris or your shorts while you're out and around and it will just give you that really lovely um, summer vibe to it and then the other one I've gone with I did pick something a little bit muted because obviously I don't want to scare everyone off too much um, with all my bold color choices and I think this one here is really gorgeous and it's that black and white version and it does look really really lovely so you've got this one here as well it's got that little bit of pink and again I think you could make this up into a sleeveless version or the long sleeve with a collar or maybe a short sleeve and you would have a really really gorgeous top that I think um, both of these fabrics lend themselves incredibly well to to the Hepburn top pattern. Both of the Art Gallery knits, they're both 145 centimetres wide, so they are just under that 60 inch mark. And for a fabric that is 60 inches wide, or basically that 145, um, you are only looking at 1.6 metres of fabric. So you're not needing a huge amount of fabric um, to make your Hepburn top. And obviously, if you're going to go with the sleeveless version, you would need um, a little bit more. So so you are looking at roughly between, I think it is a metre to 1.6, but do check the back of the pattern for the correct um, pattern quantity, but you don't need a huge amount to make up the Hepburn top. And also check out um, my favourite Minerva sewist, and that is Molly Does It. She has made some really fantastic versions of the Hepburn top. Um, she's made quite a few, so you should be able to get quite a bit of inspiration from Molly to make up your Hepburn top. Because let's face it, um, if you have a top pattern that you absolutely love and it works for you, it is one of those things that you do end up making multiple versions of and clearly that is something that Molly has done because she clearly loves her Hepburn top as you can see by all of her variations that she has done and shared with us on the Minerva community page. Now we have the second top within the charm pattern line and that is the Rita blouse that I think was the very first pattern that Gertie released way back when she did or started up her charm line of patterns and to be honest I can never quite remember what came first the Lamar or the Rita or the Rita or the Lamar but either way they were both two of the very first patterns that Gertie did do and like the Lamar dress the Rita blouse has also had an update so she now comes in the larger size range of a size 2 to a size 20 along with that larger cup size of a size A through to the size H so if you have looked at Rita before and thought maybe she wasn't big enough you might want to consider it now that she comes in those larger sizes. 
Rita is a really lovely versatile pattern with some gorgeous retro styling about her and I do absolutely love this elasticized neckline it's really comfortable then you've got that elasticized sleeve at that short length that you can either um, with that sleeve style you can either have it elasticized or you can leave it loose and floaty both work really really well and look really gorgeous um, I however do have on the long sleeve paint bishop sleeve expansion um, that Gertie did as well way back when um, so I've added that to my Rita top which gives me a really lovely versatile um, trans seasonal top that I can wear quite a lot of the year round and I absolutely love um, my version of Rita in this and I do also have um, several Ritas um, in some really nice short sleeve versions that are part of my summer staple wardrobe. Now if you wanted to have the bishop sleeve style but you didn't want to go for the patron expansion the closest pattern sleeve that you can get and if you've got the night and day pattern you can use the bishop sleeve for that and basically what you are doing is you're taking or you're cutting off the top of the sleeve head so you just need to work out um, how far that sleeve goes up to that bodice point here um, and then you can just chop off the top of that sleeve and create your own um, bishop sleeve expansion version for your Rita if you wanted that longer sleeve styled look. If you're considering making Rita in the long sleeve version, whether or not you're going to go with the patron, the patron option sleeve or you're going to creatively pattern hack the night and day dress, um, bishop sleeve that I have suggested, you might want to consider using a really lightweight fabric like the rayon chalice that I have used for mine here. I think it's really soft, it's really drapey and you don't notice um, how much fabric there is actually within the sleeve in this really lovely lightweight fabric. So I think the rayon chalice is a really great option um, fabric for you to make a long sleeve version of the Rita in because it just drapes and hangs really, really well. And I will be honest, I have made several versions of Rita, as I said, mainly the short sleeve versions, and I've used um, a whole bunch of cotton poplins for mine, and they work incredibly well. And I do know that um, on a lot of the Gertie's Facebook page, there are a lot of girls that have quite happily pattern hacked Rita and used knit fabrics so that is something else that you could consider doing um, where they've eliminated the um, zip that goes in the side seam and also I guess the princess seams because you wouldn't need those if you're going to do a knit version of the lovely Rita top. So what fabrics do we need to make our gorgeous Rita top? And I have already mentioned a couple being a lovely chalice and also um, some great cotton poplins. And again, you can use a sateen and also maybe a lawn, which works really brilliantly with this particular top. And if you are feeling up to a more of a challenging fabric, um, you could use a really gorgeous lightweight silk, like a crepe, um, a crepe de chine which would be really really beautiful because it would be so so lightweight and just simply stunning and the amount of fabric that you will need if it is a narrow fabric so we're looking at our quilting cottons that are around that 112 centimeter mark you're looking at about 1.6 meters and if you're looking at a wider fabric so that would be a lot of the sateens around the 150 meter mark um, you are looking at then only a meter so it's not the most massive amount of fabric that you do need to have for this make but if you are going to take on the bishop sleeve like i did i did find that i did need about another um meter for my bishop sleeve because i think the actual fabric required for the bishop sleeve is something like 90 centimeters or a meter or something it's quite a lot for the sleeve that you need um, so that does add up to the quantity that you need if you're going to make the long sleeve version of your lovely Rita blouse just in case you were wondering you don't have to order from the website in whole meters we do go up 
in 10 centimeter increments after you have placed an initial order or fabric request of 50 centimeters. So if you're looking at your reader and thinking, I only want the 1.6 to place an order for 1.6 meters of fabric is not a problem because I have to admit, we all don't necessarily want um, leftovers anymore of our fabric because we're all very conscious of fabric wastage and we are now offering this great opportunity for you to order um, in those 10 centimeter increments so you can just order what you need for your project without any leftover fabric. And that now brings us on very nicely to what fabric do I have for you to make your lovely um, Rita blouse in. And I have gone for something a little bit fun, um, a little bit colourful, but a really nice small scale print. Um, because I think Rita always looks great in small scale prints. So I have done my fair share as well in a really large print. Uh, but I particularly love this one here. This really gorgeous um, black backed um love heart print so you've got those beautiful little love hearts in the pinks and the reds in all sorts of shades and I think this is just a really lovely fabric to make a really lovely um, fun Rita in because Rita for me is all about a really lovely fun print top um, and I think this would make absolutely perfectly made up it is again a really lovely quilting cotton weight fabric so you are looking at that 112 centimeters it's got a nice amount of body to it and I think the quilting cottons are really just super perfect um, fabrics to make your Rita in um, and they're, they're just a great all-purpose fabric for a really lovely top and that will look brilliant in your Rita. Then the other fabric that I have got for you is I recommended a really gorgeous chalice. So here we have a beautiful art gallery chalice. And again, I've gone for something a little bit more muted. Um, so you've got all these lovely, soft, pastely tones, which are just beautiful. And this is a rayon mix chalice. And I love this. Um, it's the same type of fabric as what I'm wearing. So it's got that lovely, soft um, drapeability with it. Um, and it is really, really gorgeous. And this will make up really beautifully um, into your Rita top. But the one thing that I will say um, that I did with mine was that actually when I made or when I have made my Rita top because it is so light this particular fabric and I love the lightness of it through across the bust and my sleeve I wanted a little bit more firmness through the body here so what I did was that I backed um, the my fabric here um, with a nice um, cotton lawn fabric so it's just got a little bit more structure it's not too heavy and it just is that little bit more of a sturdier design around that tummy area if you wanted a slightly more fitted or a little bit more structure around that lower area with your top and again you've got that beautiful soft drapiness around the bust and the sleeve that I think the rayon chalices work absolutely perfect for and again another great fabric for a beautiful girty pattern. Before we move on and have a look at our lovely Minerva sewists who have taken on the beautiful Rita blouse, I thought I would just quickly mention um, two of the most common um, or most popular, I should say, pattern hacks that people tend to do utilising the lovely Rita blouse pattern. And as we touched on at the very beginning, it was using a jersey fabric to create um, a pull-on Rita. Um, so that is by taking out the side seam, eliminating the panel seams, and, and using a jersey fabric to make your lovely Rita blouse so she is a really gorgeous um, pull on top whether or not you're going um, long sleeve, bellowing sleeve or however you want to create the sleeve within your Rita um, for your jersey Rita top. And then the other really popular version of a pattern hack for Rita is to turn her into a lovely dress. And that's where a lot of people tend to cut Rita off at the waist um, and then add on either a circular skirt or a gathered skirt onto that empire line um, that they've got around here at the waist and then just making and that just makes the absolute perfect um, Rita dress that you will see as a really um, 
common interpretation of the lovely Rita blouse. Now, who do I have for you that has made the Rita blouse? Well, I have to say, I absolutely love Sewing for Sanity's purple version. I love that in her gorgeous um, twill fabric that she has used. And also what she has done to have her um, longer sleeve line, all she has done is really extended the existing sleeve um, and popped it on a band. So she's just added the length to the sleeve and then had it come to that nice elbow length, which I think is really gorgeous. And it just goes to show that you can create Rita um, in another version that is just absolutely perfect for you. And I do love what Sewing for Sanity has done. And then the next version that we have, once more, it is the lovely Molly Does It. And I have to say, she's made um, a couple of Rita's that you will see on her profile page. But the one that I do love the most is her Bon Voyage classic Rita top. And I just think that is not only is it the perfect fabric for Rita, because I do think Rita is all about a really fun top. Molly just looks absolutely fabulous in her really lovely simple Rita top and it just shows Rita at one of the best and most classical um, interpretations of what you can do with one of Gertie's beautiful patterns. The first dress we're going to take a look at is the cinchet dress and the cinchet dress is this really lovely um, popover style dress that comes with an incredible lot of design options. However, you could be aware um, that there is another version of this dress knocking around that Gertie did a couple of years ago from her So Jiffy book um, and it's it's the same sort of dress, but the cinchet dress actually comes with a lot more design options, which the book version didn't come with. So the cinchet dress will give you um, three neckline options, plus two sleeve options, plus also it can be sleeveless, and also you get um, some really lovely um, statement pocket styles that didn't come with the book version. And I think this is a really great um, add to her staple collection of patterns as this particular dress. It's a really nice pull on, pull over style. Um, it's a trapeze shape that can be cinched in at the waist with either a belt or you can um, share the waist um, area of the dress for that really lovely vintage fit and flare look. With the cinchet dress pattern, you could create up to 54 different dress versions um, of this dress. So you could actually make it through a whole year and not actually wear the same dress um, each week for the year. So that's how many variations you can create um, with the cinchet dress. And I will say I have made the cinchet dress version and also the popover version. Um, I don't know which one is my favourite because essentially I am going to say they both are kind of the same pattern except one comes with a lot more design options than what the original version came with and the thing is that um, when I made the original version I didn't actually show the waist first off and I wore it a few times and I didn't actually like it um, with all that fabric and I didn't like the look of it pulled in with a belt so I then got around to actually sharing the waist area of the popover dress and also my cinchet dress and I actually found that gave me a much better silhouette um, it was a much more controlled distribution of the fabric and it is definitely something that I would recommend if you were going to make the cinchet dress your go-to fabric for your cinchet dress are a lot of the similar fabrics um, or a lot of the same fabrics that Gertie does recommend across all of her patterns. So that will be starting with light to medium weight wovens. So that is things like your cotton poplins, your broadcloths, your shirting um, fabrics. If you want something with a little bit more structure, you might want to consider a sateen. If you want something really light, you might want to go with um, a voil or a lawn. And also there are eyelet fabrics that will work absolutely amazingly well. 
then if you want something that's got a little bit more of a silky feel to it you could go with something like a chalice which will give you a really beautiful um, floaty dreamy version of your cinchet dress because that will just be so soft and it will help to gather in all that fabric and it won't have as much stiffness um, but if you go for something a little bit heavier maybe like a um, linen that Gertie also recommends that much like the sateen will give you a much stiffer version of your cinchet dress which um, might not be to everyone's liking so I would probably stick to things like really lovely poplins, um, cotton lawns and I would have to say the beautiful chalices would be my top choice of fabrics um, to make the cinchet dress in. You do need a tiny bit of interfacing to make your cinchet dress. So that is just a little bit of interfacing that goes around the collar um, and also around the sleeveless um, or around the armholes for the sleeveless version of the cinchet dress. And your average fabric length that you will need is three meters. So it's not as hefty as some of Gertie's other makes, um, but it is still a reasonable amount of fabric for this gorgeous dress. And if you want to use a really bold fabric, you will need slightly more to make sure that you pattern match um, your dress down that center front and down that center back seam to get a really lovely flow through of your pattern. And when I made my cinchet dress, I will say I did come up slightly closer to three rolls of sharing elastic that was needed. Um, so you might kind of want to consider um, just popping in that extra roll of sharing elastic into your basket when you do your fabric order and you're getting all your bits and pieces together to make your cinchet dress. I think the cinchet dress is a really great um, dress pattern that lends itself amazingly well to really bold um, patterns and I have picked out two really um, bold patterns for you um, to inspire you to pick up this pattern and the reason why I have picked the really bold patterns is because you don't have a lot of seams to pattern match and it does allow um, for all that fabric to take center stage because the only place that you really have to match your fabric is down the center front and is down the center back seam so as long as you take your time in actually working out um, and cutting your fabric and then it does take a little bit of time to sew those two particular seams together to get that really lovely pattern match you get an amazing flow through of a really bold pattern that creates a very dramatic um, cinchet dress that I think is really really gorgeous and very very statementy but an incredible simple make and a great make to take on for you to challenge yourself in learning those pattern matching skills um, when you are using a really bold print and you want to take your time to get that lovely flow through of that pattern match. So, what are my fabric choices other than incredibly bold prints? I have this really lovely sewing themed fabric from, from Henry Alexander and I absolutely love this. Here I have it in the black and white version but it also comes in this amazing um, coloured version that will just give you that serious, serious pop of colour. Um, this is obviously the 112, 114 centimetres wide so it's fairly much that standard quilting cotton width. Um, it's that lovely cotton poplin so it will have a nice amount of structure. However, I have used this when I've made both my popover and um, the cinchet dress and I found this to work really well, or this weight fabric I should say to work really well and it does um, shirt together really nicely to give you that lovely um, 1950s hourglass silhouette and I think this would work absolutely amazing and it is just perfect for someone who does love their sewing and wants a bit of a themed cartoon type fabric. I absolutely love this and um, I do have this fabric on my make list to make up um, but I 
I don't know if I'm going to do a cinchet dress or not. Um, I've got a couple of options in mind for when I make up a fabric like this. Um, but again, a really great fabric and I think this would give you a really gorgeous cinchet dress. Then the other fabric that I have for you is again, as I said, it's a very bold print. Um, it's a little bit more colourful um, and again this is a lovely art gallery print. And again you can see we've got that all over um, style and print and this is a little bit more bohemian inspired. And again I think this would work absolutely amazing made up as your cinchet dress. This one here, um, being an art gallery print, it's a little bit lighter weight compared to the um, Henry Alexander or the Alexander Henry fabric, I should say, um, that we just had a look at. But this again will work really beautifully. It is that 112 centimeters wide, so it is that standard um, quilting cotton width. Um, and you will find that both of these fabrics are, um, I think the pattern repeat in both of them is roughly that 60 centimeters in length. So you will need to measure your pattern. Um, I don't know what the pattern piece length is off the top of my head and make sure that you have enough fabric within that meter and 20 to get your pattern repeat with both of these. And even though these are incredibly bold patterns, um, I think both of them would make up and look really gorgeous in the cinchet dress because it's something that is summery and fun and quite bold. And I think that's what these two fabrics do. And I think they will just lend themselves or they do lend themselves absolutely perfect um, for the cinchet dress and I think you should um, if you're going to give the cinchet dress a go try and go bold because I think that will look really really fun and you will enjoy wearing your cinchet dress. I will say I do have some of this um, knocking around in my stash as I mentioned and it was earmarked for another project but I am very tempted to take this on and actually make my next cinchet version dress out of this fabric because I do think it will look really really gorgeous and let's face it I love a bit of a bold print so I was really um, quite excited when that turned up and it kind of threw what I'd planned to make out of it um, completely on its head and I've had to completely change my mind um, of what I'm going to make that piece of my art gallery fabric in. But if you don't do my love of a really bold um, print, because let's face it, not everyone does, um, the Minerva Sewers that I'm going to share with you as my inspirational sewist who has made a version of the cinchet dress is the lovely Molly Does It and she has done a really gorgeous um, printed fabric in a white flower on a really lovely blue print and her version is obviously not as loud as either of the fabrics that I have picked out for you to make your cinchet dress in but she does give you that lovely um, carefree summer vibe and she looks absolutely beautiful in her very understated version of a popover dress. And then, as I said, um, I have also made a version of the popover dress. So as you can see by mine, I've got quite a lot of floral going on and it's a lovely bold print. And I also did a really gorgeous um, corset style belt that I decided was the perfect accessory to go with my cinchet dress. And this allowed me to use um, some other fabrics within that art gallery collection, which is what my dress fabric was from, um, to use some more pops of colour within my cinchet dress because it was really about lovely, bright, vibrant colours. And again, I think that's what sewing is about. It is expressing one's personality. And I have just gone for the completely mad bold vibrant look that you can see um, so clearly within my version of the cinchet dress. On another note, just before we move on from the cinchet dress, when you're having a look at all the other amazing makes um, of the cinchet dress, you will notice that I have actually pattern hacked the cinchet dress into a really lovely top. And if you have thought maybe the cinchet dress had a little bit too much fabric in it, 
for you to make a dress. Um, let me tell you, the top has been a part of my safe staple summer wardrobe this year which I absolutely love and I actually popped a slightly longer sleeve on it and I took the sleeve from the night and day dress um, so again I think this is really versatile you can pattern hack it um, but do have a little read about um, how I created my pattern hacked version of the cinch it dress into a really lovely cinch it top Next up, we're going to take a look at three patterns that are all designed to work together. So that's the L'Amour dress, the Liz dress, and of course the Dorothy Bolero as your perfect cover-up option. The L'Amour dress was one of Gertie's first patterns that she designed um, when she launched her charm range back in 2018, and she has since updated the L'Amour pattern. So it now includes the larger size range, so it now goes from the 2 to the 20 and has the larger cup sizes um, from the A to the H cups and more importantly um, it does have a lot more design options added in to the new pattern pack. So if you did purchase this one way back in 2018 when it was launched you might want to consider purchasing the new revised version. Instead of your pattern coming in the envelope design that it originally came in, um, as you can tell by my very beaten up version of the L'Amour dress, we now have the much nicer and glossier finish um, cardboard envelope style, um, which is obviously a lot more sturdier in structure, in structure. And it also comes with that really lovely glossy booklet that Gertie has done with all of her patterns instead of the original um, fold out version that you would have found in the first edition of the dress pattern. The L'Amour and Liz dress are what I'm going to refer to as sister patterns and that's where they both very much work together as well as perfect um, standalone patterns. And by that I mean what you can do is that you can take your bodice from one pattern and put it perfectly with the skirt of the other. So these interchangeable um, pattern options do allow you to create a much more bespoke version um, of any dress combination that you may like and it just does give you so much more creativity and flexibility and it does allow you um, to really take on that choose your own adventure style sewing that Gertie has started out with um, and it's really just taken the interpretations of that to another level um, with utilising these two patterns where you can mix them as one. The key thing about the bodice design in both dress patterns is that the bodice is extremely well structured and you are very much able to create that perfect custom fit bodice with the tips that Gertie does include within the pattern booklet. And if you've never made a fitted bodice before, you shouldn't have any problems with the ever so detailed instructions that Gertie has included within the booklet um, for you to knock out your own um, beautiful either Liz or Lamar bodice that you can pop with either one of the skirts when you are taking on these really gorgeous projects. And the one thing that I will say is do make yourself a test calico first um, of your bodice pattern before you cut into any of your gorgeous fabric to make sure that you do have the correct fit. Both of the bodice patterns or all of the bodice patterns I should say that you can create through these two um, dress pattern packs um, are boned and what Gertie does recommend is corset steel boning um, as her boning of choice. However I've never actually used um, steel boning myself. I do tend to use a more um, traditional plastic whale boning um, type of boning that comes in pre-cut lengths of anything 
from 20 centimeters up to 50 centimeters um, increasing in increments of five centimeters as you go along and also I tend to use a lot um, is the plastic boning that you can get on the roll and that you cut to your size and I think both of those are great options and a lot more accessible and reasonably priced if you don't want to go um, for the steel um, structured boning that she does offer and also I will say with the um, plastic boning on the roll um, you will find you get a slightly more relaxed fit within your bodice style so that is perfect if you are looking at making just a really nice summer dress as opposed to something that you want as a really super structured bodice the other major thing that you will notice um, within both of the bodice patterns is that the bodice is constructed within three layers where you have your main fabric an interlining piece of fabric and also your lining piece of fabric an interlining pattern piece may be something that you're not as familiar with and that is another piece of fabric that is cut and stitched to your main um, piece of fabric that gives it a little bit more structure and support to your finished garment. So for instance, um, if we were looking at your centre front panel pieces, what you would have is your main fabric piece, um, then you would have your interlining fabric piece. And what you actually do is that you pop your um, interlining piece to the wrong side of your main fabric piece and you stitch around um, the outer edge to treat it as one. I often just do the side panels because I find that that is perfectly adequate um, to continue the actual construction process of my bodice and then once you've got those interlining pieces stitched to your main fabric um, you're then just going to treat those two pieces of fabric as one layer and assemble your bodice um, as you would per any other bodice um, that you may have made um, previously and also you would just assemble your lining as you would normally um, do your lining for any other bodice pattern that you may have made an interlining piece is really designed to give your bodice a bit more support and a bit more structure. So it is there for a reason and don't consider skipping this step out of your make because it is really important to that lovely firm finished um, silhouette that you will get with both of these patterns. And Gertie does often recommend um, a calico for your interlining. However, I tend to go for a really good broadcloth um, and I try to keep a little bit of this in my stash in a white or a black. And the other thing is I also um, will use up often bits of scrap that I have um, from my quilting cottons as that is also a really good weight and especially if those quilting cottons are not going to be seen um, either from the right side of my fabric when I'm wearing my finished garment and also from the um, lining side of my fabric as well. So that's just another way I guess of utilizing a few scraps because it gets sandwiched in between and you won't see it. And the other thing is we do have a really great um, corsetry um, corset fabric that will give your bodices a really nice structured firm finish and if you're after something that is a really polished um, fitted finished that is a really great option to consider as well. For the L'Amour, Liz, and let's not forget um, the Dorothy Bolero, um, Gertie does recommend a lot of the same fabrics. So you are looking at things like those um, medium weight cottons. So that's things like um, obviously poplins, satins and lawns, along with silks with some body like a jupion or a shantung. And also you can go for lovely shears and flocked fabrics as well as maybe laces and eyelet fabrics. And also, um, as we're looking at these three patterns, what I have here for you is a great mix of 
fabrics that will work absolutely perfectly um, with any one of these charm patterns um, from these three that we're looking at at the moment or literally any one of the charm patterns through the showcase um, except for maybe not the Esther swimsuit um, so yeah <laughs> but anyway for the lining as well, in a lot of these makes, Gertie does recommend things like um, medium weight linings. I personally love a cotton lawn and again I keep a stash of that um, within my sewing room so I've always got some on hand. And also if you're going to be using a sheer or a lace or the Bourdieu lace or something like that, you do need to make sure that the interlining fabric that you are um, placing or that fabric that will be sandwiched in the middle of your make, um, as that will be seen, you do need to make sure that that um, does complement your sheer fabric. And again, for that interlining fabric, you might want to consider something like um, the Jupion or also a um, broadcloth will work absolutely perfect as well. Gertie does suggest for her lining fabrics, um, they do need to be strong enough to take the weight of the steel weight boning that she does recommend um, as her boning of choice to be used in all of her bodice patterns. However, I don't have a problem actually using um, the cotton lawn as I find that it is fine and it does hold up to the weight um, of my boning, but then again, I don't always assemble things, I will be honest, um, as Gertie would recommend, because as the old saying goes, there is more than one way to skin a cat, but please don't take me literally on that. And what I mean by that is actually, um, there is more than one way to assemble a garment or to do something. So even though I do tend to use a um, cotton lawn, I do find that within the assembly process that I do of putting together my bodices, um, I don't have, I, there isn't a problem with using either the plastic whale boning that I tend to prefer or if I can't get that and I need to move along with my make um, there is a shop that locally um, supplies me with just equally the boning on the roll that does work perfectly as well. For the L'Amour dress, you are roughly looking at that 5 metre mark that you will need for your fabric. And also for your Liz, you're looking at about 5.5. And they are both for fabrics that are roughly that 112 centimetre wide, which is your quilting cotton width that a lot of us um, do tend to make both of these makes in. But if you are getting a fabric that is a little bit wider, so that's that 150 or 60 inch width, um, fabric you will need that little bit less so just work that out from the back of the quantities um, of your pattern to know exactly how much you need for that um, but as I say working on an average when you're roughly calculating up um, how much fabric you need for either one of those makes um, if you guess to make five meters you're fairly much bang on um, with how much fabric you will need with the L'Amour dress, you can make up to 18 different dress combinations with this mix and match pattern. What you have are three bodice options, and if you check out the um, design section within the booklet, you will discover from these three um, standard bodice patterns, you can actually create up to nine different looks. So do check out that, because you can go for anything that is strapless to halter neck, to those lovely little gathered straps to the removable drape if you want something um, amazingly statementy and then there's just that really gorgeous um, sash that goes across the front so there are quite a few um, different combinations to really give you a lovely bespoke bodice um, for your Lamar make and also what you've got is that sarong skirt that is really really popular along with the three-quarter skirt um, that comes within the pattern pack and don't don't forget that your Liz dress is also completely interchangeable. So that allows you again to create an, addi an additional different version bodice with any one of the skirts that come in with the L'Amour pattern pack. And also you can pop 
um, on any one of those bodices in the L'Amour pattern pack, the gathered skirt to your Liz dress. So yeah, there's so many combinations um, of what you can put together um, by utilising these two sister patterns together. They, they are really kind of, I think, um, one pattern. Um, even though they've come in two pattern packs, they are kind of one pattern because everything within those patterns really do work amazingly well and it does really keep going with the choose your own adventure style of sewing that I absolutely love um, that Gertie has introduced to all of us. So what fabrics do I have for you to make your gorgeous L'Amour dress from? So here we have two very different fabrics um, and I'm going to start with this really gorgeous tropical print fabric which is this one here and it's got all those lovely um, leaf print design and it's got hibiscus flowers in the blues and the pinks and the purple then you've got a really gorgeous flamingo um, this particular one here it is that 150 centimeters wide so and also it is a really lovely medium weight cotton so this is just absolutely perfect if you want that really lovely um, summer fabric and the next fabric that I have for you is this really gorgeous sateen fabric here. So we've got this in the black and the grey and the white. So this one here is incredibly striking. It's a 97% cotton mix with a little bit of elastine in it. So it's 3% elastine, which gives it a tiny, tiny amount of give. So if when you're cutting your interlining and your lining pieces, you could cut them on the bias so that will give your dress that little bit more give um, that would work perfectly with this fabric and again it's a nice wide um, width so it is that 140 centimeters so I think that's roughly about 58 or 57 inches off the top of my head um, and I think this would make up into a very dramatic dress it's um, a nice weight it's heavier than what the broadcloth is than what the other one was that I had shown you so it will hold up the structure of the skirt that little bit more so you will get slightly more of a defined shape with it no matter whether or not you go with a gather a circle um, or the really lovely um, sarong type skirt and also because it's slightly more of a random all over print um, you shouldn't have any problems with pattern matching either so this one here is a really really great one and it will give you a super super gorgeous um l'amour dress both of these great fabric choices for your l'amour dress um as i said are just perfect and they are that um just under that 150 centimeter wide so it does cut down on that fabric quantity um that you do need because let's face it if you're going to do the circle skirt or the gathered skirt you are topping out at that five meter mark with um, your L'Amour make or even your Liz make should you choose one of these fabrics to go with your Liz make and let's face it Gertie is not known for being um, tight with her fabric budget when it, came, when it comes to making really beautiful makes. And speaking of beautiful makes, what I've got for you are two really lovely Minerva makers that I've picked out um, to inspire you to make your L'Amour dress and both of these lovely ladies that I have picked out, um, they have made their gorgeous dress in a lovely tropical print, so you shouldn't have any problems envis envisaging um, our great um, flamingo fabric made up into either one of these styles. And first up, we have the prize winning dress um, from Molly Does It, um, as she did win a prize at a pinup competition for her version of the dress. And she has made a really classic um, L'Amour dress with that lovely sweetheart neckline and I'm going to say the gorgeous sarong skirt um, with that really lovely splash of red underneath. And she looks absolutely stunning and really, really gorgeous in it. And I can see why um, she would have won a prize for her dress um, or for her outfit at that pinup competition because she does look absolutely stunning. And the next talented uh, Minerva community sewist I'm going to share with you is Melita, who has done 
two versions um, of the L'Amour dress. So she has done um, her two versions in the same fabric and I think both are really gorgeous and I couldn't pick between which one I loved the best. So again, she's done that gorgeous sweetheart neckline, um, really simple and really elegant and she has teamed that with a really lovely circle skirt. So that is just a really classic, lovely summer dress. And then she's gone for something a little bit more dramatic. Um, again, she stayed with that sweetheart neckline. Um, she's added that sash that goes across in the dusky pink to give it a bit of a pop of color. And she's teamed that with, again, the sarong skirt that is super popular um, to pop with this make. And you can see again, she's got that nice bit of pink hiding under that little bit of that sarong skirt to give it all a really gorgeous statement. And I think both girls have done an amazing job and they are really, really beautiful makes. And you can just see how versatile um, this particular pattern is. You have to agree that both of these are just really gorgeous makes in the L'Amour dress. And also maybe um, check out my sewing profile here at Minerva as well. As a couple of years ago, we went to Disney in Florida and I made a Halloween inspired um, L'Amour dress for our trip. So that again will give you a completely different look and a completely different take on this really lovely dress pattern. The next charm pattern we're going to take a look at is the really gorgeous Liz dress. So the Liz dress has that beautiful um, bust shelf design um, which makes it one of the most sought after vintage styles and this um, design is really designed to fit your curves and dare I say it maybe put your best assets out there. Um, this really beautiful bust shelf design um, bodice has that pleated bra detail across the top here. It has a band that goes under your bust and that band really does help to bring your bust forward um, before it goes into that lovely narrow strap on your shoulders and then into that gorgeous plunging um, V neckline at the back that just makes the Liz dress so absolutely beautiful. The Liz pattern comes with a gathered skirt and don't forget she is the sister pattern to our L'Amour dress so it does increase your style options when you are swapping around the pattern pieces um, between the two pattern packs um, being the L'Amour and also the Liz and don't forget your Liz dress does come with that really lovely tie waist detail as well which I think is just super super cute um, and it is, it is really nice to have have that with your Liz dress I think that makes it really gorgeous and the Liz dress is what can only be described as the only standalone pattern that Gertie has done within her charm range and by that she hasn't really supplied multiple options um, to this dress within the same pattern pack but as I have said um, she is the sister pattern to the L'Amour dress so I guess that is your multi-optional um, design options but because she is a standalone dress don't let that put you off buying this pattern because it is easily one of the most popular patterns I think to date that Gertie has done and I think just about everyone who has probably um, bought a Gertie pattern has probably got um, the Liz dress as a part of their pattern collection. What fabrics to make Liz in? Well, again, we've got all of our beautiful fabrics here and Gertie also suggests some additional fabric types for this particular one, being things like maybe linen blends, silks with body, um, like maybe a shantung or a jupion. Um, a brocade will be absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I have seen more than one brocade version out there. And of course, a really lovely um, silk and wool mix will work perfectly perfectly as well. The instructions within the booklet for this one um, comes with lining just the bodice um, or the actual entire um, 
dress. So that is the skirt portion of the dress as well. However, I have found when I have actually um, done a gathered skirt, um, I do find them too heavy to actually line them because Gertie does recommend um, exactly the same amount of fabric, again, in a lining fabric to line the lower half of the Liz dress. And I just think it is too heavy and really not very necessary. And I think you could just admit the lining on the lower half. And if you really do want a lining for the lower half of your dress, you might want to consider a circular skirt lining done as a separate piece, um, like a slip that you can just wear underneath this particular make. Um, so it will still give you that really nice shape if you need something lined um, but you're not going through all that huge fabric yardage each time you're making something that is a gathered skirt or even a circle skirt I have to be honest I don't line my circle skirt makes either um, I just find it easier to do a separate lining so if I do need something um, that might be a little bit on the opaque side I've actually got a slip um, that is just done on a really simple grow grain ribbon in a circular skirt um, and that can just be popped under each one of my dresses that I might need a lining for. And I've got two of my favourite fabrics here for you to make your very own Liz dress. Both of them are an art gallery fabric, so they're the top two here. Um, they are that very much, um, I'm going to say, foresty green, olive tones with some pinks and also um, a little bit of orange thrown in, kind of that peachy tone orange that's been really popular with a lot of the art gallery fabrics this season. And the first one that we have is this lovely Bloomsbury cotton. Um, this is a poplin, as I say, from art gallery. It is a really lovely weight. It also comes in a darker version with a black background, which is really stunning as well. Um, but I love this one because it's got the pinks and the oranges um, and you've got that nice limey bright green with it and I think if you were making the Liz dress this would work perfectly whether or not you want to go a gathered skirt or a circle skirt and you've got quite a few colour options if you do want to do that bust shelf detail in a couple of colours so you could do obviously um, the bust shelf detail, um, the pleated bit in a lovely pink with a nice green around it um, that goes down into that V shape um, or you might like to do um, just that um, shaping underneath in a pop of colour like the pink or the orange or you might just want to take a little bit of a colour and do one of the greens and just accentuate it that way. So I think this one would be really great for the Liz dress and again it will work absolutely perfectly in either the um, gathered skirt option or also a circular skirt option and I think it would look amazing as a sarong skirt um, with maybe a serious hint of hot pink underneath that. I think that would look really really great as well. Then the other fabric that I have for you is another really gorgeous art gallery print and what it is is a border print and this is incredibly popular um, as a design option by Gertie as a fabric and also it was very popular within the 50s. So you've got this beautiful heart shaped print um, with this gorgeous um, foresty green with those very vintage colourways. So you're looking at the mustard, um, the peachy orange, um, the tangerine orange and a little bit of aqua thrown in and also you will notice the top of the fabric you've got that lovely spot detail that does just fade off and I think this would make an absolute gorgeous version of your Liz dress with the gathered skirt and also this particular one does come in another colorway if the green is not um, your favorite option it comes in a really lovely um, cream version as well so that one is another option for your beautiful Liz dress and I do think as well um, you could this one again allows you to pick a couple of colors out of it to really accentuate that lovely bust shelf design so you could pick two colors you could pick one color um, so you could go with a lovely orange or you could go with a plain um, 
green with it um, or you could go that mustard so you could do the bust shelf bit um, in a color with the band being in that nice fine spot going all the way around um, or you might like to do the bust cups in the lovely spot um, and then take a really nice pop of the mustard or that really gorgeous um, tangerine orange um, to pop your fabric and define that band as well. So these are two really gorgeous fabrics that I think would make up absolutely beautifully um, in your Liz dress and I think the border print is absolutely perfect if you do want to go for a gathered version. And my featured sewist for the gorgeous Liz dress is the beautiful Gorgeously Vintage. Gertie's patterns are really, um, I'm going to say, a staple part of Melina's makes. Um, she has made some beautiful dresses um, using this pattern and she always goes to town with her picks, um, with her hair and her makeup because she's really just channeling and living that beautiful um, 50s vintage vibe when she does make these dresses. So she always goes to town on everything and does some really gorgeous photos. Um, and Melina has done two really lovely makes um, we've got the super classic version of the Liz dress so she's done it in the gorgeous scalloped hem um, with that beautiful lace detail over that bust shelf design element of the dress and I just think that looks, she's done a gorgeous job on this and it really is just the classic Liz dress um, done amazingly. And then the other dress that she made was the Sarong Lamar skirt that she teamed with her Liz bodice. And again, I think this is really gorgeous, very, very statement. Um, I absolutely love the metallic um, midnight blue leopard print fabric she got her hands on and I think this dress combination again is absolutely stunning and she has done an amazing job by creating two very different looks um, with the Liz dress and I think they are both um, very iconic looks for the Liz dress that a lot of people do associate with the Liz dress. And I'm not going to share my version of the Liz dress because I did one with a circular skirt. I used a really gorgeous um, comic themed fabric. Um, so maybe have a little look at my profile page when you do get a chance. And also you will see that I have hacked um, my Liz bodice into a really gorgeous peplum top. And there you can also see that um, on my profile page here at Minerva if you want to have a look and see what I make as well. I am going to describe Dorothy as kind of the cousin that goes with either the Liz or the L'Amour dress because sometimes, let's face it, with all those gorgeous sleeveless bodices that Gertie has designed for us, we do sometimes need a little bit of a cropped jacket or a cover-up um, around of our shoulders while our ensembles still absolutely shine. And that is where the Dorothy Bolero comes in to all of its own um, by just giving us that little bit of an extra layer to allow us to wear these beautiful makes all year round. The Dorothy Bolero is really about giving you options from that nice day wear cover up to maybe some serious evening glam. And what you do have is the lovely band collar, which is absolutely perfect for tiki or beach looks. Then you've got the really lovely winged collar, which is the classic 50s shape that works really well with day dresses to maybe rockabilly um, jumpsuits. And then you could add in um, matching cuffs for a seriously more statement look. Then the next version that you have got is the really nice collarless version that gives you a really understated vibe when you want your bodice to do all the talking because it's more about maybe your dress that you've got on underneath than what your little Dorothy Bolero looks like. And then of course you've got all the um, multiple finishing options as well within this one. So you could make it um, as an unlined little bolero, you could do it with facings, you could do it fully lined for a really nice 
um, clean finish on the inside and then there are other things like using shears or even making your um, Dorothy Bolero reversible so you could do that which we, again creates a really gorgeous statement piece and then you can add things like really pretty um, closures like um, frogging and also you can do button loops so there's so many variations of what you could do um, with your Dorothy Bolero to complete your look um, with either your Liz or your L'Amour dress. And you will find that the pattern booklet that comes with Dorothy is again super comprehensive. There is so much information in it on how to take this really simple jacket into an amazing um, statement piece within your wardrobe. And I have to be honest, I think it is one of the most glossed over patterns that Gertie has released. And I do think that if you do love that um, 50s vibe styling to your wardrobe it is a really important piece to add in because sometimes you do need to cover up and it is just the perfect piece um, for those occasions. I will be honest, I haven't made the Dorothy Bolero, but I did make the Butterick version, which was very similar that Gertie did a few years ago when she was working with Butterick before she branched out on her own. And I think maybe that's why a lot of people haven't bothered to purchase the Dorothy pattern um, because they look at it and think it's very similar to the Butterick version that she has done. However, with the Dorothy pattern, obviously you get it in all the multiple size range, which is a bigger size range than what the Butterick pattern does come in. But you do get a lot more options um, and it allows you to, you get more options within the pattern and also you get all the information that will allow you to work this gorgeous pattern with really delicate fabrics, um, with shears as well. And you will find all this information um, within the booklet and it is a really wealth, um, there is a massive wealth of information um, should you want to take on the Dorothy Bolero in a really lovely sheer or a beaded fabric you will find all the tips and hints for that within the booklet that you don't quite get um, obviously with the Butterick version and also Dorothy can be made um, using any one of the fabrics that we have spoken about with the Liz or the L'Amour dress as well as the lace and the shears that we've touched on and the average amount of fabric that you do need is two meters so that is two meters of say a quilting cotton of a hundred and twelve centimeters wide but if you went for a wider fabric your quantity would be a little bit less and what I have done for you to give you a little bit of inspiration um, to help you out um, to make this gorgeous um, bolero pattern um, I have some lovely art gallery prints here and I've picked out a couple of really great um, small scale designs so you don't feel that they're too overwhelming with this bolero pattern but that doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't make it up in a really gorgeous great print the first fabric we're going to take a look at um, for your Dorothy Bolero is this really lovely art gallery print, as I said, and it is called, or it is part of, the Floral Elements um, Cotton Poplin range, and it comes in 48 different colours. So there's things like blues, pinks, greens, neutrals, there are just so, so many um, colour options, and it's what I would describe as um, a blender with attitude because what it is is a really subtle print it's got this gorgeous floral um, design all over it and you will see as you look at all the different color options in this um, there is a quite bit of detail within the pattern and depending upon the color option that you go with you will find that the pattern pops slightly more in um, more color variations than others and it is a really nice one if you just want something quite subtle quite understated as a cover-up because a lot of your other fabric is maybe doing all the talking and you just want something really subtle so this is a great one and to be honest it will make up absolutely perfect as well um, in the Rita top that we had a look at at the very beginning. So this is a really lovely um, fabric from Art Gallery and well worth a consider um, for your Dorothy Bolero or even your Rita top. 
And if you're seeing your colour listing in this particular fabric or maybe another fabric listed as a pre-order, basically that means we've either run out of stock or we are waiting on new stock to arrive because it is new, new fabric. And we do like to keep all of our lovely fabrics available on the website um, for you to have a look at. And also when we know we're getting um, new fabrics, we do start to list them on the website. And what you will find is that a pre-order um, usually takes anywhere from maybe five days maybe three to five days or it could be up to ten days to maybe a fortnight um, if we've just placed the order because we've just run out and what will happen is that you can place your um, fabric order as a pre-order and then the moment um, that we get that fabric in we cut it and send it out to you so if you're ordering um, something on the website and then that is an in stocked item and you're also ordering a pre item a pre-order item we always send on what we've got in stock for you so you will get that straight away and then your pre-order will come separately um, the moment it arrives to us and we cut it and send it out and also you won't be paying any extra um, for delivery as well for any pre-ordered products that you may do within an order so you don't have to worry about that and let's face it, if you're a UK shopper, you do get um, your free postage at the £30 rate anyway. And for the rest of the world, that is a £50 spend um, before your free postage kicks in. But um, as I say, if you've had to pay the postage um, because your order is under... Um, one of those amounts you're not going to pay a second lot of postage for your pre-order um, so even if your pre-order comes in or your order comes in maybe um, two or three shipments depending upon what you have actually ordered and if you've got more than one pre-order within your um, order um, you're not going to have to worry about any additional postage costs and the next fabric that I have for you um, for your lovely bolero I've gone for something really quite fun and I love this it's like a tiny little tiger print um, with those really lovely aqua eyes um, on this really beautiful um, I guess pale mustardy shade um, I don't know how else to describe this color but it is kind of it's not quite orange it's not quite mustardy but it is really that pale shade and it's got that really gorgeous animal print detail and I have to say I absolutely love this and this also comes in a very um, lovely pale pink version and again this would look absolutely great made up um, as your Dorothy Bolero because it's quite a lovely small scale pattern um, as long as it teamed in rather beautifully maybe with one of your other prints and I think it could work rather nicely with this one as well because you've got that very similar sort of shading in it um, so that would be a great combination and also um, it will look absolutely amazing made up again as the Rita top so hopefully these two fabrics will give you a little bit of inspiration on what to make your Dorothy Bolero in. And who do I have for you to inspire you to make the gorgeous Dorothy Bolero? Well, that would be Kitchen Stitch, and she has made her version um, to be teamed with her L'Amour dress. And she's made hers in a really lovely um, Hawaiian fabric with that blue and black accent. So the fabric's got that you know, it's that blue base with that black and she's just given her um, Dorothy Bolero, that lovely black accent on the sleeve and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And she had a really tight fabric budget of a metre and a half because she had this fabric and she knew what she wanted to make and, you know, she was going to get her L'Amour and also um, her Dorothy Bolero out of that fabric, um, I guess, if it killed her. And you have to say she's done an absolute amazing job it's a really really beautiful make very stunning um, but I will say I would probably need two um, meters if I was going on a really tight fabric budget to make something like this I don't think I could quite get away with it as um 
a two meet or even as a two meter make but I have to say kitchen stitch has done a really gorgeous job and I love um, her version of the Dorothy Bolero teamed with her L'Amour dress. So now we're going to take a look at the night and day dress um, which again was one of the very first patterns that Gertie did however she has just re-released the pattern um, with the new updated version um, in the expanded size range which we do have available here. So what you will find is the night and day dress now comes in a bust cup size from the A to H over the previous um, size range which was the B to the double D um, that may have put some of you off from buying the night and day dress um, however it has stayed within the same size range of the size 2 to the size 20. I think the night and day dress is one of the most versatile patterns um, you will ever own. You do have two um, bodice choices in, within the pattern. Um, you've also got two different collars, you've got six sleeves and you also have three different skirt options that actually give you a potential of making up to 72 different versions of this dress um, in this beautiful vintage inspired pattern and I think Think you'd probably find it um, quite freaky to run into someone wearing exactly the same um, night and day dress as what you would create as well. And the only thing that you can say about the night and day dress is that it truly does bring into all of its own that really lovely um, choose your own adventure sewing pattern ethos that Gertie has bought out for all of us and this particular dress it does embrace everything um, about that particular um, choose your own adventure style type of sewing. Also within the booklet that you will find um, within the pattern pack you do get different options on how to finish off the neckline so you will find that it's either um, a all-in-one facing a partial lining or a full lining and I love the fact that Gertie does always include these great tips um, on how to finish off her dresses and patterns and it really does bring a new skill to each one of our repertoires if you are new to sewing um, and you're discovering these patterns she brings in those little bits um, that she explains so well within the booklet um, that you will discover when you do get the night and day dress pattern pack. Now again as for fabrics it's all very much the same as all the other woven fabrics that Gertie recommends. So we're looking at things like cotton poplins, shirting, sateens, um, eyelets, lawns, silks with body, so again you've got your Jupion and your Shantungs, um, you've got your linens and your linen blends, um, amazing brocades, wools, um, a wool crepe um, and Gertie does even go as far as suggesting a flannel if you want something to keep you super toasty and warm and of course you can get something absolutely beautiful as well in maybe a wool and a silk blend that would make an absolute gorgeous gorgeous night and day dress um, and if you want to add in a sheer um, perhaps with the sleeve you would be looking at a thing like flocked fabrics or maybe even a beaded fabric um, which is always a great option if you just want to make a statement with the sleeve if you wanted to do it the whole thing in a lovely beaded fabric or a lace fabric that would work really well but make sure that you do pick a suitable um, underlining fabric to put your lace or your sheer um, to have underneath your lace or your sheer I should say. So what have I got for you to make your night and day dress out of? Well I will be honest I have reeled it in a little bit so I haven't picked out anything too massively overwhelming. Um, so I've gone with a really beautiful um, Brody Anglaise lace that we have and this comes in up to 10 different colours. So you've got things like your white, your black, your beiges, beiges and obviously a few really lovely pops of colour as well and I think this would work absolutely fantastic. Um, as a sleeve 
on your night and day dress. So if you want something with a little bit more um, of an opaque sleeve for a really dressy statementy dress, um, we've got, as I say, the navy brody anglaise, which I think is absolutely gorgeous and would work really, really well as your sleeve. Or you might even consider doing it um, in the white version as a wedding dress um, with a white opaque sleeve and then you've got all the lace that would be backed um, all the way through for a really lovely short um, below the knee inspired I think 50s wedding dress would look really really gorgeous in the white um, so yeah so getting very sidetracked there so anyway we've got the navy so you would go with that one for your sleeve and then for your main fabric I have gone with the really beautiful um, silk dupion that we do so we've got that because we're making a really special night and day dress so we want something really lovely so the silk's got a nice bit of body to it it will give your skirt a really lovely shape it will be absolutely beautiful if you decide to do it in the lovely um bell shaped um or tulip shaped skirt um, I think would look absolutely great and again this particular silk dupion I think it's 45 colors so it does come in an array of colors so you shouldn't have any issue matching this really lovely um, silk dupion um, to any one of the laces that we have in that really great um, navy broad glaze lace that I did suggest for the sleeve and I'll just show you here how gorgeous the two of them do look together um, with that as I've lost my other fabric um, but there we go so you can just see how you've got that really nice navy um, and that will give you a really beautiful amount of texture and it's got a bit of a thread on it there um, so that will give you a really lovely beautiful texture and if you wanted to do that all the way through I think with the um, tulip shaped skirt it would look absolutely gorgeous and a very statement dress and a, such a beautiful texture and feel to it now if you were considering making more of the fuller skirt option of the night and day dress um, I have picked out a really gorgeous animal print for you and I absolutely love this one this one here is from Lady McElroy and it's a really lovely um, soft drapey crepe um, and it is just beautiful so we've got that black and white design with that little bit of a splash of some green and some blue and some mustard and this would look really gorgeous as well made up and I think this would work really well with a um, lovely drapey sleeve like I've got here because it is just so soft and also if you're going to make the gathered skirt with it I think it would work really well with that because it's got such a soft drape to it it would have a really soft um it would just drape and gather really really well and they're because within I think the gathered skirt of the pattern there is quite a lot of fabric so sometimes um, you can be put off by all that fabric within the pattern but I think this one because it is so soft it will just gather and look really really beautiful and have a lovely soft silhouette to it so I think both of these would be absolutely gorgeous made up as your night and day dress and you could put a lovely black collar on it as well um, and I think that would just look really really beautiful I will just mention one other fabric that I think will look absolutely amazing um, made up in your night and day dress and that was that really lovely sateen that we saw earlier which was um, the grey and black and white kind of animal print and I think that would absolutely look really really gorgeous made up as well in your night and day dress that's got a tiny amount of stretch to it so it will give across the body but not too too much and also um, um, it will gather up and give you a really lovely dramatic foolish skirt and I think that would look really really gorgeous um, made up in a in one of the versions that you want to create from the night and day 
dress pattern pack and also yet again I will just mention that you are roughly looking at five meters um, across an average of all the dress versions within the pattern pack as well so yeah fairly much standard very much um, a five meter quantity dress yet again from Gertie and now we're going to have a look at some of you really, really gorgeous Minerva makers out there that have taken on this really lovely um, dress pattern. And the first one that I'm going to start with is the absolutely stunning, gorgeously vintage in her beautiful red rose version that she has made using um, that Michael Miller fabric that Gertie did a couple of seasons back. And I think that just looks really, really fabulous and that is very much um, the classic combination I'm going to say for the night and day dress. And here is the very sexy Serena Cheen. I don't know how else to describe her other than absolutely very sexy with those beautiful eyes that she's got going on there. And she again looks absolutely fabulous in her Liberty Print inspired um, night and day dress. Um, version I guess with that really lovely bellowing sleeve and I really do think that um, a night and day dress with a bellowing sleeve is something that I need to add to my wardrobe because I think that just looks absolutely fab. Um, I'm going to say quite simple but really really stunning. And here is Kitchen Stitch in her gorgeous um, night and day dress. She's gone again for the very classic um, rectangle um, collar is or rectangle neckline shape design and she's popped the collar on it and she's made this really gorgeous short sleeve summer version um, in this beautiful zigzag fabric and she's herring boned her stripes and I have to say that this dress really does look absolutely fabulous um, and it is really all about I think the fabric talking and she's done an amazing job with those stripes and this is just a really gorgeous um, um, summer version of the night and day dress and I hope these lovely makers have inspired you to pick up this pattern and to add it to your pattern collection and to more importantly make a night and day dress and add that to your wardrobe Next up, we have the much anticipated swimsuit design that has finally arrived at Charm Patterns now let's face it, Esther is very much a vintage inspired pattern um, or a vintage inspired swimsuit and it wasn't quite the style I think a lot of people were hoping for. I think people wanted um, a little bit more of a modern swimsuit with a lot of those lovely, um, I'm going to say iconic um, 50s inspired or inspirational elements thrown in with the swimsuit design. However, we have to remember that Esther is heavily structured like what a swimsuit back in the 50s would have been. So it's really almost like um, a swimsuit ball gown in structure I'm going to go with. Um, because really, let's face it, Esther is structured um, like an evening gown and she is really designed to flatter your curves while still being a fully functional swimsuit that allows you to have a great day at the beach or really just sipping cocktails and looking absolutely fabulous poolside. Now Esther has a huge amount of structural elements as well so that would be um, the interior bra foam cups um, to give you that lovely shape. There is boning, you've got those lovely um, panel seams down the front which are very much corset inspired shaping and also we've got tons of figure hugging control with the use of the power mesh as the underlay to really um, I'm going to say suck those bits in, that's what they're designed to do, suck and hold in those wobbly bits that we don't want to be um, brought attention to and also you've got that really nice lovely um, bra strap band across the back so you do feel really supported and quite comfortable within your swimsuit and I think Gertie has used just about every trick in the book um, to make you feel absolutely amazing in your rest of swimsuit. And as usual, Gertie has thrown us in options 
for our lower half. So we've got our full pant option that is actually under the skirt and of course you've got the skirt option which I absolutely love and I think that will be the version that I will make up when I get around to actually making an Esther swimsuit. And then there is the bloomer bottom option. Now that one's been inspired by one of Gertie's favourite swimsuit designs and it's really designed to give you that lovely hourglass figure by creating that um, lower half fullness um, around your bottom, which is absolutely perfect maybe for someone who is a little bit more of a boyish shape, so a little bit more of that straight up and down shape or that rectangle shape. And that's what that... Um, bloomer style pant is really designed to do. It's designed to um, accentuate that shape if you don't have it. So Esther is really designed with that panty um, bloomer shape, I think to really give you that hourglass design for someone that doesn't have um, that particular shape because let's face it if you were making yourself a dress um, and you were that um, more that straight up and down shape you would be adding more layers of tulle underneath your skirt so your skirt comes out in that really nice bell shape and then you'd be bringing in your waist with a really nice tight belt so your waist appeared really small and it gave you that illusion of the hourglass shape and I think that's really how the bloomer bottom was designed and I completely understand if you're like me and naturally that shape um, and I will be honest it, I have been described as um, thunder thighs and I do refer to my legs like tree trunks um, those bloomers are not for me or maybe for any one of us that is really that very heavy um, pear shape design but I think you know if you are slightly more of a rectangle shape that you know, that particular pant would look absolutely amazing on you and I think you should give it a go. And I do understand if you do feel that there are others of you out there that might just think that that is just a little bit too much fabric around your lower half and that is why you could feel a little bit hesitant about taking on um, that particular pant in the swimsuit design. But I do think that the Esther swimsuit is a win on so many levels and really there's no reason for anyone to not take on Esther and make it because I have seen some absolutely amazing versions um, out and around on Gertie's Facebook page and of course her Instagram page and people have been really inspired and taken on Esther and they have taken her straight to their heart and they have made um, and added into their wardrobe a really really gorgeous um, 50s inspired swimsuit um, tweaking the style perfectly to fit them which is what um, Gertie's choose your own adventure patterns about and I would really love someone out there to make Esther and to share um, your absolute gorgeous pick because I'm sure one of you fabulous Minerva makers has actually made Esther and used one of our products to make your amazing Esther swimsuit. Now the fabric that you will need to make up Esther in is obviously a swimsuit fabric. So you are looking at um, light to medium weight swimwear fabrics with roughly a 80% nylon polyester mix to 20% um, being spandex lycra mix. And additional to your swimsuit fabric that you will need to make your swimsuit, you need your heavy power mesh um, lining as well as specialty swimsuit lining and also those poly laminated um, foam cups for your bra shaping across the bust. Most swimsuit fabrics come roughly in that 60 inch or 150 centimeters wide fabric length. And what you will need for your Esther swimsuit, um, working on that particular length that your swimsuit fabric comes in, is for your bodice, which is 1.1 um, meters, then you will need an additional um, 0.7 or 70 centimeters for your skirt option, 60 centimeters for your pant option, and an additional 90 centimeters if you were going to take 
click on the bloomer option. And don't forget, you will need the same again for your power mesh and also your specialty lining fabric for your swimsuit. But obviously, um, you know, you're only using one or the other, you're not using both. So do check the pattern because I do think you could probably halve those quantities um, to, because you're only going to be using some of those pieces. Now, what fabric do I have for you? I have, first off, a really lovely shiny lycra knit that comes in 22 colour options. So we're looking at pinks, blues, greens, yellow, black, orange, and you should just be able to be... Well, with the colours that we have in this particular plain fabric, you should be able to visualise your swimsuit made up, also taking the inspiration from Gertie's gorgeous models, because you will find, um, even though they've used, you know, that pale blue and the pale orange in a spot, um, our colours that we've got in our plain fabric are pretty bang on, so you should just be able to imagine what your swimsuit is going to be look like made up. And this particular one here is the really gorgeous pink, so this is very very similar in colour um, to the one that Gertie has done as a part of her, I think it's Camp Gertie, um, so she's got that with the lovely green piping and in that nice pale baby pink swimsuit colour, swimsuit coloured fabric I should say and this is our baby pink um, swimsuit fabric which would make up absolutely perfect so you know exactly what that would look like. And then the next fabric that I have for you is this really gorgeous animal print that I absolutely love. And I think this would make up absolutely amazing as well. So you've got this lovely animal print. Um, it's a little bit firmer, I have to admit, compared to the plain fabric. So it's got that little bit more um, tightness within the fabric. So it will probably hold its... Um, I don't want to say hold its shape because that's not quite right. It will give you more of a firmer feel swimsuit. So if you are looking for really um, good control, um, this one here would probably be your better option to go with this particular one in a print instead of the plain option because I think this will give you a much more firmer um, feel across maybe your tummy with your swimsuit if you were concerned about that particular area. And I do think this fabric would make up absolutely amazing. Um, and I have seen a version of it where you've got a print down the front of your swimsuit and then you've got a solid um, down as the side panels. And I think this one would work really brilliantly just like that and give you a really gorgeous statementy Esther swimsuit. And just to give you a little bit of inspiration or a bit more inspiration to take on the Esther swimsuit, I've just popped up my two favourite images um, from the Esther swimsuit where Gertie has got all of her gorgeous models to, ve to model the various variations of the swimsuit. And I have to say, I do absolutely love the canary yellow version. I think that is just fabulous and really bright and just very, very beachy. And then the pink one with the skirt is my other favourite. So I do hope um, that one of you do take on the Esther swimsuit and share your pick very, very soon with us to inspire um, all the other Minerva makers out there to take on the Esther swimsuit. And if one of you really don't share Esther very soon, she's going to have to be moved way up the top of my make list so I can just discover um, how easy and amazing Esther is instead of relying on one of you guys to tell me, um, you know, that Esther is absolutely amazing. And just a little reminder before we move on to our next pattern, um, I do just want to remind you that we do offer a sample service. So if you're a little bit unsure of what colour perhaps you want to make your Esther in, or really any of the fabrics that I am showing you within the showcase, we do offer a sample service. So you are able just to, as you go through the website and look at all the fabric listings, you will notice that they all do come 
come up with a sample option. So if you're ordering a few bits and you're umming and ahhing about a couple of different options for your Esther swimsuit, whether it be mixing one of the lovely planes with a print, um, or you're just unsure of what color you really want your swimsuit to be in, when you do place your next order, or even if you do just want to order a couple of samples before you actually place your fabric order, you are able to do that. So you can actually see the fabric before you commit yourself to buying it by utilizing our amazing sample service. The last pattern we're going to take a look at, um, and I think I've probably saved the best for last, is again one of the new releases this year that Gertie has done, and it is the beautiful Byron um, evening gown dress that Gertie has added to the charm collection of patterns and I'm going to say yes I agree with Gertie let's roll out the red carpet for Byron because she is absolutely full of charm full of drama and absolutely full of glamour this particular pattern Let's face it, Byron is like no other pattern Gertie has done. It has that beautiful mermaid silhouette um, and sculptured torso. Um, this design, it really does just serve up all the glamour and drama that you can imagine with a red carpet dress. And I have to say, with a little bit of imagination, um, Byron is yet another, yet again, the, um, another really, really versatile pattern. So you can make it into a really gorgeous, um, tropical inspired maxi dress um, with a beautiful bold print or you could take it all the way to the other end of the spectrum and turn it into your very own wedding gown um, so yeah there's lots and lots of scope of what you can do with Byron as well so you could create your absolute perfect evening gown um, there are so many options with this one so you again you've got um, three sleeve options um, I don't know which one I like best if it's the puff sleeve or the raglan style off the shoulder um, I love both of those and obviously the raglan sleeve that's off the shoulder um, it does come in that two lengths so you've got that nice little short length and then you've got the three-quarter length one as well and then you've got the flounce which is another problem that I have because I don't know if I would want a flounce or not flounce or how much flounce um, again yeah it's brimming with design options um, for you to bring some serious red carpet glamour to your next party or occasion that you do need a beautiful statement dress for. And the fabrics that you could make Byron in is again a whole array of Gertie's um, standard fabrics that she recommends for a lot of her dresses. So you're looking for something that's a medium to a lightweight fabric. So she recommends things like pop poplins, um, broadcloths, shirtings, sateens, eyelets, um, piques, lawns, um, silks with really good body to them like jupions and shades tongues um, and again you've also got um, different um, linen blends and also brocades and I guess it depends upon what sort of statement dress you want to make with Byron whether or not you're going to go for something um, that's perhaps a really lovely day dress with it being um, a short dress to the knee with that beautiful puff sleeve um, or whether or not you do want to go for something that is a serious statement wedding gown so that does kind of depend upon what fabric you are going to select um, to what version or how you're going to create um, this beautiful pattern um, to fit in with your wardrobe now how much fabric do you need for this gorgeous dress well I hate to say it does kind of depend upon what variation that you're going to put together so if you're looking at the full length evening gown and your fabric is that 45 inches wide um, you are looking at a really hefty um, six to six and a half meters um, if your fabric is 60 inches wide that comes down a little bit um, but you're still sort of hemorrhage, hemorrhaging um, around that um, 4.85 meters in length if you're looking at the knee length version um, again you're looking at around two and a half to three meters um, or if your fabric's that bit wider that is between two um, 2.1 to 2.5 
five, I think it was. And that is just purely for the dress. And then when you add in what sleeve you want, again, that is anything um, from 0.4 for the short raglan sleeve, 0.7 for the long sleeve or 70 centimeters and then up to a meter if you're going to go for the puffed sleeve so you do need to really consider um, what option you're going to put together and work out your fabric quantities because Gertie does do this thing of where she sort of puts in all the different quantities um, for the different pieces and you just kind of have to work out what options you're going to put together to get your total fabric yardage that you do need to make this beautiful dress and let's face it a lot of her other dresses um, patterns are recommended their fabric yardage in that particular way so you do kind of get used to working it out what fabric options do I have for you for our lovely Byron gown well i did go quite conservative as you can see i've actually gone for some planes um, but i've gone with a couple of different planes that will give you a little bit of a different vibe to your dress and the first one that i've gone with is this really fun glitter coated cotton fabric um, so it feels almost like a little bit of a waxed fabric it has i'm going to say the ever so tiniest amount of stretch in it just a tiny amount but it's not really classified as a stretch fabric and it's got like that silver glitter finish to it so it will make an absolutely perfect dress i think for christmas or new year's or a really lovely statement occasion for when you can dress up and go all out this one here it has i think off the top of my head 18 colors so you've got blues you've got greens you've got um a couple of different reds you've got black you've got quite a lot of different versions um within this particular dress and i will say that this is is a really great price point this particular one um, because I do find that as much as I love making a statement gown I don't always want to spend a huge amount of money on my fabric because I'm only going to wear it two or three times if I'm completely honest and I've got a lot that I've only ever worn once um, and that's because I always allow my statement gowns to be really creative and I get really um excited about making something new if I've got really lovely special occasions coming up I always want perhaps something a little bit different and I don't want to wear the same one um, more than once or twice if I'm completely honest um, so yeah that's a really great fabric and then the next one that I've got for you as well is this really gorgeous reversible Jupion. So this particular one, again, it has a huge amount of colour options. Um, I think, again, there's something like 23. So you've got some purple, you've got silvers, you've got red. Um, there is a really gorgeous tangerine orange, um, if you love Gertie's version of her orange dress. Um, there is a really beautiful limey olive green as well. And a turquoise if you want something really incredibly bright um, and the great thing about this Jupion is that it is reversible as well so you've got that lovely shiny side on one side and then the other side is that matte side so if you don't want it shiny you've got that really lovely matte side as well so that gives you a couple of options with the Jupion and again it's a fantastic price point so you're not spending a huge amount of money um, because let's face it it does take a bit of fabric six meters can be quite a lot and it does add up if you're looking at the top end of the fabrics but both of these are really great um, reasonably priced fabrics that you're not going to have any issues of buying up to six meters with with either one of those fabrics and if you want to go the whole hog with your Byron gown we do have here this beautiful um, Dupion that I would have shown you earlier um, with the night and day dress so if you're considering a bridal gown or a truly statementy dress um, this would be the absolute perfect fabric if you are after something a little bit more luxurious and top end of the range and the silk Dupion comes in a beautiful white White, a champagne an ivory um, so they would be all absolutely perfect for a wedding dress version of this and again if you want something just in a really gorgeous statement color there is a really amazing pinky purple um, shot fabric that I think would be really really gorgeous in this particular gown 
And the last Minerva Maker I'm going to share with you as a part of my Charm Patterns Inspirational Showcase is the lovely Diana Sands in her beautiful knee length version um, with that short flounce that she has made her beautiful Byron gown in. And, you and I hope you agree with me that Diana has done an absolute fabulous job um, making up this lovely pattern in that beautiful brocade fabric that she had in a stash or that was earmarked for another project that um, she thought no I know what I'm going to make with that and it's going to be the Byron gown and she has just done an absolute beautiful job. So I hope you have loved seeing um, all these lovely Minerva makers as a part of my charmed pattern showcase and just sharing with you, I guess, all these lovely charm patterns and also um, all of these talented Minerva makers that we have part of our Minerva community that have taken on um, one or more than one, in some cases, these fantastic charm patterns by the lovely Gertie. So I would just like to thank each one of our lovely Minerva makers um, for making up these lovely patterns so I can share them with you. And I really do hope that they have inspired you um, to pick up not only one, but maybe all of Gertie's lovely patterns and to consider them as a part of your next Minerva make. So we're done with another showcase. I really, really hope you have enjoyed looking at these charm patterns um, or this charm pattern collection in depth and my fabric inspiration for these great patterns. And I hope you didn't find some of my fabric choices a little bit too overwhelming um, as I do love a good print if you can't tell by my top that I am wearing. Um, if you have any questions about the charm pattern showcase, whether it's um, about one of the patterns or a fabric that I've suggested just leave a comment and I will get back to you um, and let me know as well um, what you thought about the showcase and what other showcases um, you would be interested um, for me to do for you in the future if you've been inspired to take on one of the charm pattern makes or maybe even one of the fabrics that I've shared with you from the showcase today, don't forget to share a pic or even better still, a video um, of your finished make so we can all see it as a part of the Minerva community um, page, which would be amazing. Um, we love seeing what all you makers out there do make. It is always really inspiring to see um, how everyone interpretates different patterns. I really do love it. And also, if you do want to see more Minerva videos, the follow button is just above the video um, next to where it says Minerva. And don't forget, everything that I've talked about is tagged. So your favorite fabric from the showcase shouldn't be too hard um, for you to find um, if you haven't already um, tagged it and popped it um, in your basket with maybe one of the pop-ups along the showcase. If you've only just discovered us here at Minerva um, and want to come and join our community of like-minded makers um, from across the globe, do open a Minerva account, um, which is kind of like your own little part of the Minerva community where you can save um, things like this particular video. Um, and you can also save fabrics or patterns or maybe whatever you have discovered here on the Minerva website, um, you can save it to your own little part um, of the Minerva community page. And you can also save um, hashtags and other people's makes. There's all sorts of things that you can save directly into your own little part um, of your Minerva community page that no one else has access to. And it's just there really nice um, and easy for you to find and to come back to. You might want to consider joining our Minerva Craft Club for 10% off your purchases for a whole year from the date that you join up. I know it's not always the best option if you are a little bit of a fabric hoarder um, because the 
mention of the word discount and fabric together just makes me want to buy more so the Minerva Craft Club should really come with big flashing red lights that say warning 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 um, but anyway do consider joining the Minerva Craft Club because it does save you quite a lot of money through the year if you do tend to make quite a lot of makes it's a really great um, benefit to have by joining the Craft Club so I'm Marie here at Minerva. Thanks for taking the time and stopping by and hanging out with me and having a look at all these gorgeous charm patterns and the fabrics as a part of today's um, showcase. I really hope you have loved it and have enjoyed it and I do hope you have discovered maybe a new pattern or a new fabric um, that is making its way further up on your make list. So until next time, thanks for watching and I will see you very soon for another Minerva video of some description. So take care, so on and stay safe. Bye.